Hello everyone, welcome to Encryption, the tech tips and tutorial channel. In this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to configure a primary domain controller on a CentOS 8 with Samba. This is like getting Active Directory domain controller in Linux machine. Let me explain how our lab will be like. We will have two virtual machines, CentOS 8.1 and the Windows 10. CentOS 8 machine will be configured as a primary domain controller and the Windows 10 machine will join the domain. After successfully joined to the domain, the domain users will be able to log in and get their home directory on Windows 10. The hostname of the CentOS 8 server will be samba-dcserver.networkheroes.local and the hostname of Windows 10 machine will be nt-windows10. The server's static IP configuration will be as shown here. The IP is 10.10.10.15/24. Gateway is 10.10.10.1. DNS1 is 10.10.10.1 and DNS2 is the IP address of the server itself although the server is not configured as a DNS server. Here in my lab the primary DNS server is running on my wireless router which has the IP address 10.10.10.1. Likewise, the IP address of Windows 10 is 10.10.10.11/24, which it has got from the router's DSCP server. Gateway is 10.10.10.1, DNS1 is 10.10.10.15, and DNS2 is 10.10.10.1. Although the CentOS server is not the primary DNS server, and you are not required to specify that, I'm just showing you since the real-time configuration will be in this way. Now let's move ahead and begin the configuration. I'm gonna verify the internet connectivity and as you can see that's fine too. Now let's install the required package using m space hyphen y space install space samba and then asterisk. It will install all the packages related to samba. So it takes a bit time. So I'm gonna fast forward this video. Okay, the installation is complete. Now if you run smbd space hyphen uppercase b, you can see the current Samba version is 4.11.2. Next you need to modify the smb configuration file which is inside slash etc slash Samba and the file name is smb.conf. Rather than directly modifying the configuration file, I'm gonna take a backup of the file on the same directory in the name smb.conf.back then running ls command we can see the file is renamed as smb.conf.back now let's create a new file with the name smb.conf and write the required configuration parameters let's first define the global parameter and its variables workgroup equals network heroes you should replace this name with your domain name security user domain master equals s domain logons equals s local master equals s preferred master equals s pass db backend equals tdb sam logon path equals uh, double backslash percentage of case l backslash Profiles backslash percentage of case u. I, I suggest you to write as I do. Logon script equals logon dot bat. Add machine script equals slash user slash sbin slash user add space hyphen d space slash dev slash null space hyphen g space 200 space hyphen s space space slash sbin slash no login space hyphen of case m space percentage lowercase u then let's define homes comment equals home directories browsable equals s writable equals s now also let's define printers parameter comment equals all printers path equals forward slash bear slash spool slash samba printable equals s print space ok equals s browsable equals no now let's define net logon 
comment equals network login service path equals slash pair slash lib slash samba slash net login browsable equals no writable equals no finally let's uh, define profiles path equals slash pair slash lib slash samba slash profiles create space mask equals 0755 directory space mask equals 0755 that's all then save and exit from the file now you can check the configuration file for any mistakes with test parm command oops I got an error I think I gave the wrong file name let me check it oh yes by mistake it's been smb.conf dot I'm gonna rename it with smb.conf the configuration file name always should be smb.conf again checking the configuration file with test farm command we can see it's fine and okay just press enter to dump whatever we have defined on the file next uh, let's create the directories or the shares with proper permissions which we have mentioned in the smb.con file now you should create the users whom you want to log in to the domain let's create uh, user 1 and user 2 next we need to create machine accounts you need to create machine accounts for every machine in order to allow domain login from windows machines the machine accounts are special accounts with with dollar symbol at the end the machine accounts for machines do not need login cell neither home directory so add a new group named machine with group id 200 to add a samba machine account let's run smb pass wd space hyphen m space hyphen a machine one dollar symbol here smb pass wd space hyphen m tells that account will be used as anti-primary domain controller next uh, let's move and create some samba users smb pass wd space hyphen a root here root user is the administrator that can be used to join the windows systems to be the part of the domain in this case do not provide smb pass wd with the same password as the actual root account on the server create a different password to be used solely for creating computer accounts this will reduce the possibility of compromising the root password also let's create two more samba users finally you need to start samba services and enable them to start automatically on every boot Now let's add a firewall exception for Samba service and then reload the firewall. Okay, now let's move on and apply the proper SE Linux policies to Samba domain controller. So for that, set as a bool space hyphen uppercase P space Samba underscore domain underscore controller space on. Also set as a bool space hyphen uppercase p space samba underscore enable underscore home underscore dice space on also let's apply to the samba shares which we have defined in the smb.con file as well so for that uh, chcon space hyphen t space samba underscore share underscore t space slash pair slash lib slash samba slash net logon also chcon space hyphen t samba underscore share underscore t space slash bear slash lib slash samba slash profiles now let's disable the s linux so that we'll not be messed up with the, with that things after you get everything fine then you can enable the s linux and check back one more thing that we must do is add the firewall ports samba uses ports of various services when it runs as an active directory domain controller the ports are like uh, dns ports kerberos 
Endpoint, Mapper, NetBIOS, Name Services, LDAP, SMB over TCP, and so on. So you need to add the ports in the firewall. Here I have a list of them. You can add them one by one. Or you can just copy all of them and paste in the bash cell. Then finally, reload the firewall. Now I'm gonna test the connectivity by hostname from each of the hosts. First, let's try to ping from the server to the Windows 10 machine. It's not successful. As we don't have the DNS server configured, let's add the host records on the file slash etc slash hosts. Here, write IP address of the Windows 10 machine space followed by its host name. If you have other Windows 10 or other machines that will join to the domain, then uh, you have to specify all their IP addresses and host names in this file. Save and exit from the file. Then again, check the connectivity. Now it can identify the other host by the name as well. Also in the Windows 10 machine, let's add the host record. Run notepad as an administrator. Open the hosts file from the directory C, Windows, System32, Drivers, etc. Make sure all file is selected from here. Open the hosts file. Here at the end, add the IP address space followed by the host name of the server. Then save and exit the file. Again, open command prompt and ping the server with its host name. As you can see, we get reply from the server. As we have changed the SC Linux mode and other configuration, we need to reboot the server now. Okay, once the server is booted up, go to Windows 10 machine. Here, click on change settings, click on change, click on domain and type your domain name. If everything is fine, you should get this pop-up to enter the domain username and password. Type the username as root and type the password which we specified while adding the SMB passwd user. Now it takes a bit time to verify. So keep patience. If you get any error, uh, you might need to edit the registry. Let me quickly show you how to do. Let me quickly show you how to do that. Open the registry editor. Here expand the H key local machine, then click on to expand the system, then current control set, expand the services, here find landman server and click on it. Here I already have these two parameters. If you don't have them, let me show you how to create. I first select them and delete. Then right click, click on new, D word 32 bit value, give the name domain compatibility mode. You should give the name exactly as I am giving. Double click on it, give the value as one and click on OK. Likewise, create another D word parameter named DNS name resolution, exactly as I am doing and set its value to zero. That's all you need to do. Then you can just close this window. Luckily, I'm not getting any error. So we can see this message. Welcome to the network heroes domain. After joining to the domain, you should restart the computer. Wait until the computer boots up. Okay, now here you can see an additional option other user. Click on it. Type the username as root or any other user that we created earlier. Give its password and wait until you get the desktop for that user. Sometimes you may get this type of error. Just sign out and sign in back. Okay, this is how you can configure CentOS as a primary domain controller and join Windows computer on the domain.
Now I'm gonna show you how to sign out from the domain user and log back in as the local user. Let's sign out from here. Click on other user, then sign in back using the local user account. To log in as a local user, you should give the host name backslash the username, then the password of the user. Now you are logged in as the local user account in this Windows 10. So you can switch between the domain user and local user at any time. Okay friends, that's all for now. I hope the video was useful to you. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more useful videos like this. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next. Until then, have a nice time. Goodbye.